Lobby Tools, Florida's legislative intelligence company. Subscribe today to Florida's leading policy, budget, and campaign tracking service. Request a free trial today at lobbytools.com. In 1977, the Seminole Tribe opened drive through cigarette shops, not charging or collecting the state's then 23 cents a pack tax. It raised millions, but began a contentious battle with the governor and legislature. I think they should pay the tax the same as anyone else. But the tribe had its defenders. They've taken this money, they've built schools. This is something that's important for the very survival of a people. Then in 1979, the tribe opened high-stakes bingo halls, a federal lawsuit to stop the moneymakers failed in court and on appeal. And the Seminole tribe remained unconquered after that lawsuit. The U.S. Supreme Court declined to get involved. Fast forward to 2010 when the tribe negotiated an exclusive 25-year deal for slots, poker, blackjack, and more. A good day for everybody in our neighborhood as well. But after a federal court found the state violated the exclusivity, the tribe stopped its $350 million annual payments in 2019. This is the, this is the agreement. When signing the new deal, now before lawmakers, both sides say it's good for everyone. And this only further establishes the health and education of our people. Having this relationship from the tribe is really going to be beneficial for the state of Florida. And if it's approved, the new gaming deal is sure to be challenged by anti-gambling forces. If history is a guide, the Seminole tribe will again be a formidable opponent. Reporting from the state capitol, I'm Mike Vasilinda.